Thank you all for coming here tonight. It's uh, kind of that, uh, that film is a little bit shocking. Uh, yeah, anyhow, uh, back in uh, 1986, 85, 86, we declared the Mears Island Travel Park. But uh, just about a year ago, we, uh, and that Mears Island Travel Park was only on Mears Island. So last year, Tribe did uh, declare the entire traditional territory of Tlaoque as, as a tribal park. And we figured that this was a very important thing for <coughs> us as uh, Tlaoque to live here. And also, of course, uh, other people who also live here. Because uh, the, uh, the management of the resources, how it had been conducted uh, formally. Taken uh, the initiative to do that. Uh, we have um, struggled long and hard to, to do this, and uh, there's a lot more that uh, we need to learn from each other about about this land. Um, I know that you know I've been here for 62 years, and I still am learning about this land. I'd like to first tell you a bit about uh, the uh, culture of our peoples and how our people were operating here prior to anyone else arriving here. We operated as Tlaoque, and one of the oldest villages that we come from is the village of Hopitsit. Properly pronounced like that, it's not Hopitsit, it's Hopitsit. It, it means meeting place. And so the uh, people, Tlaoque, First, the Europeans arrived here. There were between seven and ten thousand people living in many different areas around here. Of course, over there on Mears Island, several locations here along the waterfront were few enough. Since. At Idaho Pitsit, there there used to be many totem poles in front of every house. Every house had several totem poles in front of it, and basically, what those things. <coughs> Our, in, in our culture, it was like our constitution. We didn't have writings, we didn't have this stuff. But we had teachings, and those teachings began as soon as our mothers conceived our lives. And those teachings did not end until we died. And so, you know, the, uh, the very first teaching was uh, about being respectful first of ourselves and then of everyone else. Till we, when we're growing up, the uh, teaching of respect has been carried on, especially when we're born. In fact, uh, when we're sitting down to eat, my grandfather used to come and sit there and talk to us about being respectful first to ourselves. And then we came to the age of six or eight years old, everyone. All boys and girls, and everyone was initiated into the wolf clan. And that was about the beginnings of the teachings for the rest of our lives about our roles and responsibilities on this land and to each other. Because uh, what we had was we were taking care of the land for the future generations coming along behind us. It was very important to leave it in a better situation for them to come behind us. And so we have all those crests between the top and the bottom of the totem pole, which are very important. The, uh, the top crest was the most important one, and the next most important one was the usual one on the bottom. And I've heard people say, ah, you're just the bottom of the totem pole. <laughs> but in fact, it is one of the most important positions because the people that are on the bottom of the totem pole is usually the wolf, the bear, or the killer whale, the people of these clans. They're not the bottom because of the bottom. They're the bottom because they're, these are the ones that uphold natural law. And their teachings about natural law 
all of these things. Sometimes some people will ask, what is natural law? Well, our parents got together, that's how come we are up here. It's part of natural law. It is, it's, it's, it's the gospel truth, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then the other part of that is we will get old and die one day and have no choice in that matter. But uh, what, what, I have, what we have from, from our ancestors, our teachings that, that we still have, and art has been one of the most important aspects of humanity the world over. It gave us all the stuff. It gave us writing. So I was going to pass uh, this back over to uh, Paul and Terry, who's here with me. Terry and I had opportunity to travel down to uh, Sydney, Australia in, in November. And there we uh, attended the World Parks Congress. And there were people from 170. 72 countries and over 6,000 participants. And uh, what I found really was, was uh, there were three things that, that there were uh, three main concerns of all humanity. One of the worst ones is mining. The second one is deforestation. And the third one is about our water. We all need that to live. There's nothing we can do without it. Will not survive, will not be here. You and I, we need to have a clean glass of water to drink. And that's the truth. So, do all the animals and the creatures that are here with us. So, you know, in, in, uh, in one of the, uh, the uh, uh, workshops that I did go to, there, there was uh, a workshop, on them, and they were talking about uh, all these cars that get manufactured every year. And recently, you know, you drive from here to Nanaimo, and, or Victoria, or wherever in, in Canada or in the United States, and you go across there and you see all these brand new vehicles that never sold. What do they do with those things? They park them somewhere way out back there, out of our sight. And that's metal. We keep mining, we keep doing this stuff that we can show here. And this is really good. <laughs> That's where we're going with all this stuff. Thank you. For this water. Terry Brewer.